Uh, I'm going to ask you a little personal question this morning. I uh, don't, don't want to offend anybody, but, but let me ask you this. Have you lost your mind yet? And don't be pointing fingers, okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, have, you lost, have you lost your mind yet? Now, I'm not minimizing mental illness. As you know, we know I work with folks that, 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 that uh, have worked and do work with folks that experience mental illness. But that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your mind. Ha, have, have you lost it yet? And maybe by the end of the lesson, I'm going to convince you probably it's a good thing to lose it and lose it to the right person for the right reason. In fact, some Christians have been accused of having lost their minds. In fact, Paul in, in uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, 26, verse 24, when he's appearing before Festus, uh, he said, Paul, you're beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. He keeps Paul of having lost his mind. In fact, early Christians are even caught, you sort of like that, you know, they're lost their mind. They're turning the world upside down was what, what, what they said in, in, in one place. That, that they, they, they're just, you know, they're just, they're, they've just lost it more or less. Paul warned the Christians in 1 Corinthians about how they conduct themselves in a worship service. He said, if you make sure that, that you do things decently in order, or, or the unbeliever will come in and think that you've lost your mind. So, so this was one of the, the things that, that Christians were sometimes accused of, having lost their mind. And in fact, as Christians, we know we're commanded that we're to, you know, sort of submit our bodies to the Lord as a living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So, so we know we're supposed to submit our bodies to God as a sacrifice. But what about your mind? What about your mind? In Luke chapter 10, verse 27, the summation of really the, sort of the old law, uh, the young man answers, so you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Clearly, loving God is about giving him all that you got, yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, uh, everything you've got to God. But, but, but to, to give God your mind, to... to Give it over to him to, to relinquish, relinquish your, your, your thoughts and your motives and, and, and your values and everything. Just, just give them to God and let his mind be in you. To lose your mind to the Lord is a great thing. I guess when you think about it, how much of the time do you spend during the day to you just think about God? Do you just dedicate yourself to, to, to looking and, 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 and contemplating God's will in your life and, and maybe focusing on the blessings he's brought to you? Do, do you practice every day, a, a portion of the day, just in contemplation of God? You know, it's very easy to find reason in this world to be unhappy. It's a broken world. And, and it's very easy to, to, to sometimes get disillusioned with this world. When we see, you know, people who are supposed to be good are acting in bad ways and, and we see some of the ungodliness around us and we sort of see the, the culture sort of falling apart around us, it's very easy to find things to dwell on that are negative. It's very easy to have a, a dark or dismal outlook on life. But, but how much of your day do you spend just contemplating about God and thinking about Him? I have observed very often that people sometimes who have broken bodies sometimes have great spirits. Even though physically that they've got illness, even though they're, they're faced with limitations, that sometimes when they, don't have, when they can't get up and, and get a glass of water for themselves hardly, sometimes they have a renewed spirit within them, a, a renewed mind within them, and they just seem to be so at peace with their circumstance. I think it's because they, they turn their, their mind over to God. And their desire was for him. In fact, to make this really clear, that Satan has an agenda. Satan is out to capture the minds and hearts of men and women, boys and girls. That's what Satan desires to do. And in fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Paul said, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, that Satan who do not believe, lest the lie of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. You see, Satan wants to capture people's minds so they can, they can twist it 
and distort it and prevent them from seeing the gospel that the gospel might save them. Satan would love to have the minds of folks. He knows that he has the minds, he has the souls. As he has the mind, he has the body. If he has the mind, he has the heart. So Satan's agenda is to, to capture the minds of folks, to, to, to twist them and distort them into his image, to go contrary to the gospel of, of Christ. And if he can capture people's minds and darken their minds so they cannot see the gospel of light, then he has control of them. As Christians, we're told to pursue the mind of Christ. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to talk about how Jesus, even though he was God, he took on the form of a servant, a bond servant, and humbled himself to, cross, to death, even the death of the cross. Uh, uh, Paul talks about the, 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 this, this capacity for us to have the mind of Christ, to pursue the mind of Christ. If you will, to have a Christ-like, out, Christ-like outlook and attitude on life itself. That we're called to lose our mind, if you will, to Christ. Well, you say, well, uh, (laughs) there are people who seem to have sort of lost their mind that seem to be happier than some people that that enjoy it. I have a a client, a young man, and he always would sort of entertain me, and and he he, uh, suffers from a form of illness. And he came in one day and he says, let me show him a t-shirt. And he had his shirt and he pulled his jacket back. And his t-shirt says, I do not suffer from mental illness. I enjoy every minute of it. And he just had this sort of a, a good outlook. He, he didn't, wasn't minimizing the fact that he struggled with a mental illness, you know, but, but you know, uh, he found a way to put it in a perspective that, that kept him healthy. To realize that sometimes we can have great blessings sometimes and things that would beset us. But when we look at losing your mind to the Lord and, and, and giving your mind over the Lord, there's great blessings in that. It's not that God wants to take your mind that, so you're this mindless being that, 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 that knows nothing. God wants you to know a lot. God wants you to know the blessings that he has planned for you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. I'm going to read the next verse too. But anxious, be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds Christ Jesus. Isn't that just a, a, a powerful thing? To believe that if we, if we can give our mind over to the Lord, that somehow he's going to guard it and protect it and keep it and it will keep our hearts as well, our, our, our intellect and our emotions, that we can just give it to God. Don't be worrying. Don't be fretting. Don't be wringing your hands. But give what's going on in your life to the Lord through prayer, through thanksgiving, supplication, simply asking God what you need. And somehow God is going to give you this peace that surpasses all understanding. It just don't make sense to folks. And he's going to guard your hearts and your minds to Christ Jesus. It's also in the same chapter 4, verse 13, that he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when we begin to understand sort of what God is out by, by us losing our minds to him, by giving our minds over to him, was yet he's out for our blessing. In fact, verse 8 of this. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate. On these things. A friend of mine. Um, once said this. And it sort of hung with me. He says. Jesus died to take away our sins. Not to take away our mind. In fact. What Jesus offers us. Is to give our mind to him. To think on the good things in your life. There's a lot of things in this life. Not to be happy about. I mentioned that earlier. But do you ever think about the, the things in life. To be happy about. I think some people are, are, are burdened with anxiety and, and, it, and, and it reached the point it, it's almost unbearable where it almost feels like you're going to die. The panic is so great. And if I encourage some folks to, to just walk around and, and put it on a three by five card, take this list, Philippians 4 verse 18, and just begin inventorying the things in your life that are noble, 
that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are good report, anything virtue, just just list the things in your life that are that 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 are good. Carry it around with you, and when you feel overwhelmed, pull that list out and review it. You see, when we begin to have the mind of Christ, we begin to see the blessings that are in this life, and not just the brokenness that in the world around us. So. God wants to bless us by us giving our mind over to him. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. I love this passage for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God wants to give you. He wants you to know power. He wants you to experience love. He wants you to, to, to have a, a sound mind. We used to be a much more um, Gentile uh, and, and, and gentle people. Uh, and, and I grew up about hearing about people who are feeble-minded. And, and you ever hear, hear that feeble-minded? You know, that they were feeble And that was sort of a large category of thing, you know. Uh, we probably, some of, probably referred to my family, some mental illness and dementia, things like that was going on. The reason we, we use the word feeble-minded. You know what? When we use the mind of this world, when we, when we use the thinking of the God of this age, when we, when, we, when we embrace the culture that's around us instead of God's culture, guess what? We're feeble-minded. We've given our mind over to darkness. We've given our mind over to the brokenness of this world. But when we give our mind over, when we lose our mind in the Lord, when we begin to look at the world as He looks at the world, begin to think like He likes he thinks we begin to look at this. We understand that we have power. We have love. And we can have a sound mind. We really begin losing our mind to the Lord. As we give our minds over the Lord. We look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 through 24. That you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man which goes corrupt according to the seat of lust. And be renewed. In the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man. Which was created according to God. In true righteousness. And holiness. I think it's fair to say. That God gave us our mind. To help save our souls. That we make a willful decision. To confess Jesus our savior. We make a willful decision. To be baptized. We make a willful decision. To put off the former way of conduct. And put on the new, the new man in Christ. We make a willful decision to put our mind on the things which God has called us to. Righteousness and holiness. You see, God gave you a mind to use. Truly, it's sort of in our fellowship, we, we, we teach a doctrine that, that, that really believes that man has capacity to open the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to understand the Word of God, and to follow the Word of God. We, we believe that we have a mind that we can somehow use and to know God better. And God calls us to use that mind to help us and develop us. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, Set your mind on things above and not on things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When we get good at keeping our mind on Christ, when we lose our mind to the Lord, we find that we do spend more time thinking about things on above, not on things of this earth. You know, <laughs> we live in the information age. You, you can have a world of knowledge on your cell phone now at your fingertips. And even though man's acquired knowledge, do you think man's behaving any better than he ever did? I don't think so. Even in the pursuit of knowledge, that, that man still acts pretty stupid at times, doesn't mankind? Yeah. The, the, the things they come up with and the rationalizations they use for just bad behavior are what we call sin. 
It's not that man is becoming wiser. Paul said in Romans chapter 1 that, that, that because of the pursuit of knowledge that their, their hearts became futile and darkened. And they'd rather believe the lie than the truth. You see, the information is, is, is not going to be the source of the kind of mind that you want. The Lord is a source of the kind of mind that you want. Set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. What have you just put in your appointment calendar or write in your journal or, or, or put down on your, cal- your, your ledger, whatever you want to, whatever you keep up with? 15 minutes a day, that you're going to think just on things above and not on things of the earth. What have you just made yourself contemplate heaven for 10 to 15 minutes every day? Or made yourself do a spiritual evaluation of yourself. 10 to 15. Did, did you just made yourself on a daily practice do this? I can't help but think by giving your mind over oh, the Lord that it's going to change your outlook. And change your ability to th- face the stresses of this life. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. I like this verse too. This is none of these power verses I really like. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You have a negative defeating thought? You have something that devalues your worth as a person, that devalues your, 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 your image in the, in, in, as a child of God, that devalues your power, that takes away your control, that, that, that just makes you feel bad about yourself. Guess what? Take that thought captive and submit to Christ. Christ died for you. That's how important you are to Him. As a child of God, you have a rich inheritance that's already saved for you. That, that no, no matter what you face, God would never leave you nor forsake you. No matter whatever challenge you have, as we said a few weeks ago, we don't know what the future may hold, but we know who holds the future. No matter what's going on in your life, that God is there with you. And I can take my thoughts, the, the, the ones that make me unhappy, the ones that make me miserable, the, the, the ones that we really don't have as, as a child of God, the luxury of even keeping and flourishing and, 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 and developing. Take those thoughts captive and submit across Jesus. The temptations you experience, the, the negative thinking, when, when you think bad about a brother or sister in Christ or when, when, when you have a dirty or evil or, or, or a thought that's destructive, that you take those thoughts captive and submit them to Christ Jesus. You lose your mind to the Lord. You turn it over. And in so doing, you can be blessed. In so doing, you can find peace. In so doing, you can face whatever challenge this life brings you, this broken world brings you, you can face it because you know what? God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. That, that somehow He can help us to, to guard our hearts and our minds through, through this amazing peace that passes all understanding by giving our mind over to God that we can accomplish this and do this. Jesus died to save us body, mind, and so that God can use our minds in order to save our souls. Christ being the perfect example, not only he has a way of living, but also a way of thinking. As the passage was read this morning, that, that, that have the mind of Christ, that we can submit ourselves to a life of obedience and humility and submission over and over and over again. The next time that you think that you can't do something in the body of Christ, and, oh, I can't, there's someone more qualified, someone more capable. The next time you think that, take that thought captive and say, it may be difficult, it may be challenging, but by the grace of God and the power that Christ offers me, 
I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. The very next time that you think your nerves are the end and you can't hold on for one more moment, or you're so depressed and, and sad and brokenhearted, or you're so anxious you think you're going to come out of your skin, you can't sit there for the next moment, take that thought captive and say, I will submit this to the Lord. For I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. He gave me the power of love and strength and a sound mind. So I can have a peace that passes all understanding that can guard my heart and mind. Lord, I may not have it now, but I know that's out there and I will pursue it because I'll lose my mind for you. I'll give it to you. You see, white-knuckling Christians are not very much, a, much of a testimony about the power of the Lord, is it? And, and you may not be familiar with that expression. We sometimes use it in the recovery commi- uh, community about people are trying to quit drinking and using drugs, and we're just not, they're just white-knuckling it. They're just, they get, they're just holding on, just barely, barely came, staying sober. So they're white-knuckling it. They're really not sober. They're just barely there. You see, that's not a very big a testament to the power of God, is it? But when we began to yield everything to God, body, mind, and soul, we may experience that peace that passes all understanding. James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Draw near to God, and He would draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You see, that, that's when you want to ride down the middle of the road. You, know, you see those drivers want to take their halves down the middle? You, you want to keep some of your mind and, and some of the Lord's mind and some of your mind and some of the Lord's mind. And James says, that's double-minded. In fact, James says earlier in the same book, a double-minded person is unstable on their way. You see, it's giving it, yielding it over and over again. Now, when do you have to do this every day? You may have made the commitment right now where you said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try what Mark said. I'm going to, I'm going to do that for a little while. See how that works out. Guess what? Tomorrow you're going to, have to make that same decision again. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. and the, Oh, it may get easier. You see, it's that taking up the cross daily and following him. That's the challenge. It's, it's not the once and done type thing. It's that daily decision to do that. I guess the question this morning to leave you with is, have you lost your mind yet? If not, would you like to? If you're here today and you're not a Christian, lose your life to Christ. Confess Him as your Savior. Be buried with Him, him in baptism. There's a part of the world that says, you've lost your mind if you do that. And they're right. You have. But in so doing, you're promised that you have a Savior who loves you, a Spirit that's going to dwell within you, and a God that's going to claim you. If you're here this morning and maybe you need a prayer, maybe you're just having a struggling, difficult time and you just say, listen, I, I, my mind's defeating me. I know I'm victorious in Christ, but my thinking has got me so, so, so off. And if we can pray for you this morning for strength, for encouragement, what would you do, son, as we come and sing the song that Brother Adam selected for us?